Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. I sure hope you are doing well on this nice summer evening. Well today we've got another great look at a wonderful car. This is the MPC 1927 Lincoln Roadster. Now my dad built this one back in 1980. So without further ado, I want to show you all the features of this car. I had to rebuild it because my dad dropped it at one point in time and everything was broken up on it. So I've spent a lot of time actually rebuilding and repairing. And I want to tell you all about that. So let's go down to our bench and check it out. Now here we have a real treat on my turntable. This is my dad's 1927 Lincoln Roadster. And uh, this one is really nice. This is an MPC kit and it's got a lot of opening features. There's the trunk in the back. Now when I inherited this model from my dad, this whole back end area in here was broken. It was all busted in. I think my dad ended up dropping this. The other thing was that the uh, hood up here, there's pins that run in here, actually right there and right there along the trim, which go into the radiator so that you can open up the hood, you know, accordion style like this. <laughs> it's got a V8 in there too take a look at that in a minute. But one of the pins was sheared off in here and the chrome trim that comes across here was bent up. There's a little like a greyhound dog or something up here as the emblem and that's twisted over. I tried to bring it back but I couldn't really get it all the way back because the plastic is bent in there so that's why it's sort of <laughs> the greyhounds running off at the wrong angle. I did my best dad. I really tried. This has got an Ohio license plate on it, AV27 from back in the day. Of course, that's uh, MPC. Now, before I turn it around again, these MPC kits also had the steerable or poseable steering. There's a linkage in here that's supposed to turn a gear, which turns a steering wheel, but the linkage popped off because it's not glued and it's like a pin into a hole sitting like this. So. <laughs> It's very hard to align. I did have it, but then I turned the wheels and it popped out again. So, yeah, let's just see if I can accordion up the hood on this side. It's a little tight. But there it is. And the rumble seat will open up. A little help from our friends. Okay. Let's just pivot this and open it. There's a little bit of a paint scrape off right there, but that's okay. And another thing my dad did, whoops, was he glued these little pins onto the hood, or the convertible top, that go into holes that he drilled into the top of the body. So that way you can remove the top. And I also have the little folded down boot in this bag here off camera. So what we can do is hook that into this hole and carefully into the hole on the other side, which I just got to feel my way around here. There it is. And there you've got your top folded down. The only thing Dad didn't do was open up the trunk, which would have been neat. <laughs> but again, you can just see how, uh, how many features are in this model. So if you find one of these on eBay or something like that, just know that you're in for quite a bit of work. If Has anybody actually built one of these on our channel that's watching this video now? If so, let us know down in the comments below. And now let's uh, actually take a look at this closer up. Oh, before we do that, one thing I forgot about was that here we also have the little opening golf club door. So back in the, thir in the 20s and 27, the uh, rich golfing class would open up this door and throw all their golf bags right in here to keep them all nice and dry. So here's an overview of the 1927 Lincoln. You can actually see some texture in here on the top of the seat. There's also the Fun Division stamp, which is right in the floor. I can see it. I don't know if the camera can see it. Anyway, there is a little door back here as well that's supposed to hinge up, which of course is just molded in place here. Then we've got our interior. Again, they put the texture on the leather so it looks like it's actually stretched. You can also see the instrument panel in here. Maybe it's in the shadows too much. The uh, folding up hood 
Now I really had fun doing this because that pin that sheared off was right on the very edge of the hood and I had to drill so perfectly as to not punch the uh, drill right through the side of the hood. Anyway, there's that V8 engine in there. This is sort of the predecessor to the V8 that's in the Model A's in the 30s, but not really. Lincoln engine is quite a bit different, but I'm sure it gave Henry the idea. <laughs> oh, there was also these little wind wings, glass wind wings that were pointing off the side here, but Dad, I guess, lost one when he dropped it. And then when I was trying to glue the windshield on, I dropped it and the other one popped off. So maybe in the future I'll end up making some new wind wings, but for now it's uh, not got them in. So let's just carefully turn it to this side. Again, there's the accordion style hood. And this one makes me a bit nervous just because of all the little things in there that could snap. And then of course it wants to just flop down. So I can also do this. That allows you to see inside the hood. Ah, so finicky. Okay, come here. So there's that engine there. I guess it looks almost in the shadows a little bit. But you can see all the different components in there, which is always nice. So there. Okay, now let's turn this upside down. And again, you can see Lincoln is quite a bit different from the... Uh, Fords. Now, Lincoln was built by Henry Leyland, who also started up with Cadillac, but Leyland left Cadillac after a while. But he started building Lincolns, and then Henry Ford ended up buying Lincoln much later on, I think right around this time period anyway. So you can see it's got the full leaf springs instead of the uh, single spring like a Model T. There's a big engine underneath in there. And then we've also got the torque tube and the little bars sticking out here, but it's going on to leaf springs again. Oh, and here's something up here, November 1980. So that's when my dad built it. So what I had to do is glue in the fuel tank again, because that was loose. I had to glue in the little bar in the back here. Then I had to glue on the, uh, the luggage rack, folded down just like how dad had it. And I also had to glue on the rear bumper. All that was busted in here. So it was quite a bit of a job putting this all back together. But I do believe between my dad's build and my repairs that we did actually get a pretty good model. And this is gonna look really good in that future museum. I'm not sure when the date is. What I'm thinking of doing is planning out some of the displays. And if you wanna support the museum, just click that join button. And for as little as $3 a month, you can help me make that dream come into a reality. Now, just for a little bit of fun, I thought I would show you what the 27 Lincoln looked like compared to the 27 Ford of the same year. And you're going to notice quite a size difference as I just rotate this around. I've got these lined up bumper to bumper. And there. You can pretty much see that the Model T the back of the Model T stops at the back of the down top of the convertible of the Lincoln. So all of this is almost, well, this area here <laughs> added on to the back. So the Lincoln was quite a huge car. And again, quite a nice car, quite luxuriant. Most of the uh, Hollywood stars had Lincolns and the more wealthy to do class would have been driving Lincoln, much like they do now. I'm going to do one more little comparison here, just sort of as a sight thing, so bear with me. Now Lincoln carried on with this design for a few years, and this here is a 29 Ford Model A. And you can see how much the Model A is uh, basically like a smaller Lincoln in this time period. And this was when Henry Ford decided to restyle the Model T, which was at the end of 1927, of course. But again, you can see that... <laughs> Basically, the back end of the car kind of stops into the back end of the Model A, and then you still have an extra wheel and the trunk out the back. So again, the Lincoln is quite a big car, but you can see, you know, pretty close how much the Model A really got its styling influence, let's put it that way, from the 27 Lincoln. And again, the 27 Lincoln, it, it carried on that body style, I do believe, up until about 1930. So again, 
Fords that look like Fords coming from the Ford factory. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that look at my dad's 1927 Lincoln. And if you've built this, let us know in the comments section down below just how much you enjoyed the build, or did you find it kind of complicated? Now I've done an unboxing of the 1928 Lincoln Phaeton, which is actually very much based on this kit. It shares the same frame and radiator and whatnot. So if you want to see that, check out the video coming up soon. And if you would like to buy some models from our web store, don't forget to visit www.monster-hobbies.ca. We ship all the way around the world, including the United States, our friends as south of the border. It's really easy and our Canadian dollar is low right now, so you get a smoking deal on everything we get there without even having to worry about getting, like, a discount. <laughs> it's just all in the exchange rate. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Give us a good old thumbs up. That helps the old YouTube algorithm. And until next time, everybody, good luck on all your builds, and we'll see you in the next video.